What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Xiaomi Mi Smart Compact Projector. Now before we get this thing unboxed, if you're new to the channel and love home theater gear or like watching new movies, then consider tapping the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Alright, let's get this thing unboxed and see what's inside. In the box we have some documentation. Here is the Bluetooth remote. And here's the power adapter. As the name implies, this is a compact projector. It measures 4.5 inches wide by 5.9 inches high by 5.9 inches deep, and it weighs a light 2.8 pounds. Up front, you'll find the lens, which is fixed, so you can't zoom it in or out or shift the lens up and down once it's mounted. The recommended image size is from 60 to 120 inches. There's also an autofocus sensor on the bottom front. Now this is an LED projector, so it should last you about 30,000 hours, and it's rated for 500 ANSI lumens of brightness. It is 1080p, but will accept 4K HDR signals, then downscale down to 1080p. On the sides are a pair of stereo speakers with the Dolby and DTS decoding. On the back is the power input, headphone jack, USB, and an HDMI input. On the top is a power button, and on the bottom is a threaded insert, so you can mount this to a tripod for quick, easy setup. For setup, I'll be using the Apple TV and the apps built into the projector itself. The screen is a motorized Elite Screens Cinegray 5D. It's an ambient light rejecting screen, so you may notice a little hot spotting. It's going to be from the screen and not from the projector, so keep that in mind. Now, the Mi is a certified Android TV projector running Android 9.0. Therefore, you will get the official Google Play Store and all the apps that come along with it. When you first start it up, the projector will go through the autofocus and through the remote control pairing. If you want to fine tune the focus, you can do that after the remote is paired. I found the autofocus was pretty spot on though. Next, you'll get the chance to square up the image to the screen using Keystone. There's a coarse adjustment and fine adjustment settings. It is best to line up the image without using Keystone to preserve the best image quality. The rest of the setup is your basic Google run through. As you can see, this is the standard Android TV user interface. First, let's take a look at some of the settings. Under Projector, you can turn on and off the Auto Keystone and Focus, which we previously looked at. Under Image, there's a few picture presets, or you can change some of the basic image settings. Under projection method, there's a few options for placement. You can do front, rear, or ceiling placements. Under inputs are the HDMI CEC settings. A quick check shows it's on the latest firmware version. As you can see, it's on Android 9. Under sound, we have a few presets, or you can adjust the dialogue enhancer or virtual surround settings to your liking. There is 16 gigs of storage on board, with 11 gigs available to use. The rest of the settings are your basic Android TV stuff.
All right, first thing we're gonna take a look at is the YouTube app. If we take a look at the resolution, you'll see that it does support 4K. Keep in mind, this is only a 1080p projector, so it will be downscaled. As I mentioned before, this is an ambient light rejecting screen, so it does look a bit brighter in the center since the camera is off to the side. The picture quality at about 10 feet back looks very sharp from corner to corner. If you get up close, however, you will notice the pixels, but that's not too surprising. Okay, let's hop over to Netflix. I know Stranger Things is in 4K, but the app will only show HD. Not really a big deal, but it's kind of odd that the YouTube app shows 4K, but not the Netflix app. Still, Netflix does look really good, and it works perfectly with no issues. Next, we'll take a look at the Apple TV in 1080p and in 4K HDR. Now, here's a quick tip. If you hold down the select button, it'll bring up the TV options. If you go to settings, you can turn on and off HDMI 2.0 functionality, meaning 4K HDR. Right now, it's off and it's showing standard HD. If you keep your eyes on the screen, you'll see the image is fairly bright with slight variations of orange and little detail on the ground. If we turn HDMI 2.0 on, you should see a lot more detail and more color variation. There's more shades, but the image does take a hit in overall brightness. Sharpness and resolution wise, there isn't much of a difference at all. The difference in color is going to be easier to see here in the side by side. Now if we check out a darker scene, the 1080p version is brighter with more visible shadow detail, while the HDR version is a lot darker with a more black crush. So I guess depending on what you're watching, you might find yourself turning HDR on for brighter content while using standard HD for darker content. Like I mentioned, I didn't see a difference feeding at 4K material, so even up close, you're still going to see pixels. The bigger image you have, the more visible the pixel structure is going to show up. For using this for gaming, I thought it was fine for casual games, but if you're a competitive player, you'll notice a slight delay between button presses. Sound quality wise, I don't think it's anything special, but the speakers did get loud enough to fill my living room. It should be more than sufficient for a quick temporary setup. Noise-wise, the projector was actually very quiet. At the time of this video, the Mi Smart Compact projector retails for $600. Paired with the right screen or even a white wall, it can throw a very bright, punchy image. It's got compatibility with 4K HDR material, so whether you're watching a 4K movie or playing a 4K video game, the Mi projector isn't going to have any issues giving you a very nice looking image. Although it does take a hit in brightness with HDR content though. Black levels also aren't the greatest, and highlight detail can be blown out. But for the asking price, there's got to be some compromises. It's definitely not for the picky video file. I can see this being great for presentations or a casual movie or game night at a friend's house. It's small and super portable, which makes moving this around and setting up a breeze. This is also the American version, so there's no side loading the Google Play Store or using a third party app store. If there's something I'd like to see in a future version, it's the ability to zoom the lens in and out. 
As it stands now, the screen size is dependent on how far the projector is from the screen. So if you want that 120 inch size and your room is really short, you might get stuck with a smaller image than you planned for. Now those are my thoughts on the Mi Smart Compact projector. I think it's a great portable solution that has a really good image and it's small and portable and won't break the bank. If you do want to grab this, I'll leave some links for it in the video's description. So tell us your thoughts on the Mi projector. Have you used it and how do you like it? Leave us a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you found it useful. And if you're not a subscriber, tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.